Why play Lux support? Well, she's got great range. She brings a good amount of CC, and she's got both great single target and AoE damage. However, she does get hurt by hard engage, and she does struggle to do anything against a tank. Lux's passive applies a mark to anyone hit with a damaging ability. You can then detonate this mark by auto attacking, which will deal bonus magic damage. Lux's Q is a straight line skill shot which damages and roots the first enemy hit. If you hit an enemy, the skill shot carries on a short distance and can apply the same effects to the next enemy hit. Lux's W is a skill shot which shields you and any ally it passes through. It will apply this shield on the way out and an additional shield on the way back to you. Lux's E places a large zone on the floor which slows enemies. You can then press E again to detonate this early, applying the damage and applying a slow. This will be the main ability used to poke. Finally, her ultimate laser beams an area which deals a large amount of damage and reveals all enemies in that area. Your max combo is throwing Q and E, auto attack to proc your passive, then detonate your E before auto attacking to get your passive again. Then you ult and then auto attack to get that passive once again. So basically throw out all your abilities and then just try to get an auto attack between each one. However, late game you'll find that this is the more realistic combo, where you just throw absolutely everything in the kitchen sink at them and then if you get to auto attack afterwards that's good too. For masteries, go for this, it's pretty much everything you want. For build order, start Spell Thief and Pots, before getting tier 2 boots and Imperial Mandate. As a side note, Imperial Mandate is so cheap, it works so well with your kit, and it's pretty much what makes this Lux support so competitive. Following this, go for any of these, depending if your team needs more damage or more utility, before ending with any of these as you need. For skill order, if you're invading, you may want to go Q, otherwise start E, then Q, then W, before maxing E, then W, then Q, taking ult whenever you can. For summoner spells, go Flash and Ignite, your job is to make sure that things die. During lane phase, your job is to poke, poke, poke. Use your E as often as possible to be annoying. Remember it slows, deals great damage and takes up a lot of the lane. Save your Q to either go for the kill, get massive damage off or keep it for the all important disengage. And use shield to make sure that trades go in your favour. Entering the mid game, make sure you keep up your wards so you can look for picks and roam mid to force them. Landing a Q is often enough for your team to go all in on them, and once you've got this, convert it into objectives. Getting towers or rift held gives you more space to look for more picks, and dragons simply win games. Before a team fight even starts, make sure you're always looking for that cheeky pick. Remember, every team fight is easier 5v4. And if you're posturing around an objective or posturing to team fight, try to land some poke on them. Them having lower health bars can only help. When the team fight starts, you can have an incredibly impactful role. Keep yourself in a safe situation, get your shield on as many friendlies as possible, root anything coming at you or your carry, and get your damage out by hitting as many targets as possible with all your AoE. And if the team fight goes longer than 8 seconds, you'll often be able to get two rotations of abilities off. Cause I've got time left. As a final tip, if you're running away from enemies, throw your shield the direction you're running. This will mean your W bounces back to you faster, giving you that shield even sooner. Cheers for watching.